that very point, Elisha had to make a choice. And without hesitation, he gave up his own plan. Immediately slaughtering his entire livelihood to indicate that his yes was unconditional. And he began his ministry by giving the benefits to others. A lot of insight in this first day for you and I in our daily life following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Elijah found Elisha by divine direction, not in the schools of the prophet, but in the field. He found him not reading or praying or sacrificing in the temple, but he found him when he was blowing his faith. He found him at his world place. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today our Lord is still challenging us and he wants to meet us at our workplaces. He is challenging us in the same way. He is challenging us about the balance we keep because between the work we do and our spiritual life, our spiritual commitment. He is challenging us on the fact that we are giving such a huge amount of time, priority to our work. Elisha represents the ideal of an immediate response to the call of God. To live one's present life in order to serve God in a new in this case, it was, it was a full-time change of career to take on the role of professional prophet. But for most of us today, the God comes within our present job, our present work. The God comes in our family situations, in our physical locations, how am I giving importance to my spiritual life? We work for Monday. We dedicate a lot of time to care for the body. As far as we have, we eat three times a day, 21 times a week, 85 times a month. We walk the whole day to care for that body which will be thrown into a grave by people when the Lord comes. What about the care of our soul? The care of our spiritual life? And it is at that very place where we dedicate a lot of time that the Lord wants to meet us. They want, the Lord wants a genuine commitment from us to be full. Paul in the second reading speaks to us 
about the call to live a new life in Christ wherever we find ourselves. What have been our response to the call of the Lord so far? The call of the care of our soul. The soul that is actually the tree of our home. We receive hope from the Lord when we came into this world. The title for today's gospel must be The Challenge of Christ and Our Messages. Jesus, Jesus challenges those who want to be his followers. And the gospel of today, he comes. They are the Christmas. The Lord is still challenging each and every one of us today. And our lives every day are the records of our own responses. We don't need to focus on the responses of those in the gospel. Our daily lives, the way we plan it. And because of our own responses. To fully appreciate today's gospel, let us put it in this context. Previously, Saint Luke had just talked about the transfiguration which happened. And later on, there was a discussion among the disciples as to know who will be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Now, following that, James and John are feeling so powerful to the extent they want to call down fire from heaven on the Samaritan town. Then the narrative shifts to some of the most radical saying of our Lord Jesus Christ. Saying that tell us what a radical change this challenge Jesus means. Saying that tell us how inadequate our response can often be. I will follow you wherever you go. Perhaps in the bottom of our hearts we have already said that come to the Lord. But Jesus is this responding in this way. He's telling us today, don't expect if you want to follow me to have the comfort and the serenity of heaven the world and mass. Don't ever expect to get a good night or a good sleep every night. He says to another one, follow me. We know the response of that person. But Jesus is raising the bar again. Our response to the challenge of Jesus must be total. And that is what he wants from each and every one of us. Our response to the challenge of Jesus must be total. Our response must transcend all other duties. I will be naturally or normally important those might be. A third one says, I will follow you, Lord. Let me say farewell to my family at home. We know the response of the Lord. No one puts his hand to the blood 
and Lord's plan is fit for the kingdom of God. At that time, a blow was a small mount head instrument pulled by a mount of a mule. And one had to keep focus, a steady focus on the blow. Or it would veer off to the side and the blow man would end up with pocket focus. That was the practice of that time. We need to focus while doing that job. How often we take our eyes off the blow? How are we focused on our calling? We came into this world for three days to know God, to love God, and to serve God. Anything else, we are fooling ourselves. How are we focused on that mission? Give it to us. How much time do we dedicate on daily basis for that mission given to us to follow holy the Lord? The call of Jesus today is very challenging in our world, in our daily activities. Why do we suppose that Jesus was so demanding sometimes? Why the God of Jesus be so demanding? Do we sense that urgent demand in our daily life? Have we had the experience of taking our eyes off the road and focusing on many, on many other things? The Lord needs a response from each and every one of us today. A response in our daily lives, in the way we plan from morning till evening. At our workplaces, He wants to be present with us. He wants to journey with us on a daily basis. He wants us to balance the care we give to the body and to the soul. As I used to say, my wish is that we Christians with time we can try and to balance the care of the body and the care of the soul. Whenever we give something very great to the body, let's say a good meal, a good food in the best restaurant in Ireland by the best chief, the most expensive one. Before even to start to enjoy that food, we should wonder why am I giving such good food to my soul in order to start my spiritual life. Whenever we buy an expensive clothes, Whenever we go to our back home, we take a shower in order to wash the body. We think about doing the same thing 
not like the Israelites. Thank you.